glad to be back with you. Sometimes my students have problems drawing load shear moment diagrams for beams that have a point moment on them, so I thought that would make a good topic for a video. Here we go. Let's take a beam that's simply supported. I'm going to make this as simple as I can here. And uh, let's put some just pinned ends on it so I can... There. Pinned ends means no vertical displacement at the ends, but we can have rotation at the ends, all right? And let's see, let's make this two meters long. And right in the middle, let's put a little L-shaped bracket here. I think you can see that. hope you can. And let's put a load right there. Okay, let's make that 10,000 newtons. All right, and let's make the, the distance from the... the uh, load to the center of that L-shaped bracket where the L-shaped bracket sticks onto the beam. Let's make that 100 millimeters or obviously 0.1 meters. Okay, And as, as we usually do here, let's call that point A and point B. And let's call that X, that's Y, and that's M. So that's my positive sign convention. Right? That's positive X, positive Y, positive moment goes uh, counterclockwise. So, we're given all this stuff here. Let's draw the load shear moment diagram from this. Okay, well, whenever you're do, doing a strength of materials problem, you always start with a free body diagram and solve the equations of equilibrium to find all your unknown forces. So, let's do that. Here's a free body diagram, and I'm going to simplify this some. Make sure I stay in the frame here. Okay, so that's where i got to stop. All right. Um, well, let's call that FA and that FB. Okay, that looks good. Now, we've also got to account for this. Well, an off-center force really gives me a force and a moment. It's called a couple. Ever heard the stupid line that every couple has its moment? Yeah, I remember hearing that some, somewhere. Okay, so there's 10,000 newtons. Okay, so I've, what I've done here is I've taken this force and I've slid it over to right there. And I'm going to replace an off-center force with a force and a moment. If I do this right, it's going to be uh, absolutely identical to that. It's going to have the same effect on the beam. So I've got that. Now this moment's going to go that way, uh, clockwise. Okay, so that's 10,000 newtons at a 0.1 meter uh, arm. So that's 1,000 meters, right? There we go. That's That and that are now absolutely equivalent, and I think, I'm pretty sure we can solve for FA and FB. Well, there's only two things we can do here. Some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero, and some of the moments equal zero. So, some of the forces in the Y direction equal zero, that means, let's see, uh, that means FA plus FB minus 10,000 newtons equals zero. Or if you want to write it out a little more cleanly, Fa plus Fb equals 10,000 newtons. Okay, so there's the first equation. The second one is the sum of the moments has to be equal to zero. Now we can take the moments about any point we want. How about, uh, let's see, take the moments about uh, point A right there. Okay. Well, let's see. We've got that 10,000 uh, newton force at one meter, by the way, this is, I guess I need to write that down, that's one meter. I didn't specify that earlier. So right there, it's going to make a moment clockwise, so that's against my sign convention. So minus 10,000 newton meters, that takes care of that. Now, that's, that's a, a clockwise point moment, which also goes against that, so it's going to be another minus 1,000 newton meters, and finally I have FB acting two meters from the end, and let's see, let's put that right there, plus two meters times FB, and that stuff all equals zero, okay? So if I solve that one, I'm going to find out that FB equals 5,500 newtons, okay? And because the sum of the, the FA and FB equals 10,000, I'm going to find out that FA equals 4,500 newtons. Okay, so there's that part of the answer.
Okay? So now we've got the statics part of it done. I'll just write those numbers in here. Let's see, that's going to be 4,500 newtons, and that's going to be 5,500. Wow, I think I can do a better job of that. Ah. Okay, that looks a little better. So we've got everything in place now to start drawing a load shear moment diagram. And the only co complicated part of the load shear moment diagram is going to be that point moment right there. Because this is crazy, when we draw load shear moment diagrams, you actually wind up having to use two different coordinate systems. It's a little funny when you first see it, but when you see it work out a couple of times, it gets a little easier to deal with. Now I'm going to move that over since I need that still. Let's put that right there. Oops. X, Y, and M. Okay, so there we got it. Now, load shear moment diagram. Real easy here. Let's just draw our three lines that we're going to need. Yeah, those look pretty straight. Okay, so first part's going to be load. Well, that's easy. We just take the loads that are over here and write them again over there. So that's going to be, let's say, 4,500. That's going to be 5,500. These are all in newtons, of course. I'm going to have this big 10,000 newton load there, and I've got my point moment here of 1,000 newton meters. Okay, so there's the load part of the diagram. All I've done is just transcribe stuff back over to here, so that's easy. There's the load shear. Okay, well let's, that's pretty easy too. Let's go ahead and start from left and go to the right. And just do, anytime we find a load, we're going to log that on here. All right, that's going to be zero right there. What's the first thing I do? Well, I go up 4,500 newtons. Okay, and then I go over, and I'm going to go down 10,000 newtons. Okay, so do that, go down there a little bit, and over, and go up 5,500 newtons again, and I get to zero. If you don't wind up at zero here on the other end, something's wrong. So let me just color this in so we know what we're looking at. So that's 4,500 positive, and that's 5,500 negative. Put that as newtons. Get my magnets out of the way there. There we go. So that part's also pretty easy. So far, so good. So let's, let's bring it on home here. Let's do the moment diagram. Did I get that straight? Eh, I guess I got it straight enough. All right, let's do the moment diagram. Well, the altitude here equals the slope down here. And the area here equals the height down there. As soon as I start talking about heights and slopes and areas and things like that, you know there's calculus all over this. And of course there is. So if I were to integrate that, I would get this number down here. So the area here is 4,500 newtons times a distance, which is one meter. Well, 4,500 newtons times one meter is 4,500 newton meters. That's a moment. Okay, since the, the height here is constant, the slope here is constant, and that's going to turn out to be, obviously, a triangle. Right? And that altitude right there is 4,500, phone goes off in the middle of the video, that figures, um, 4,500 newton meters. Now, here's the deal. This is going to be 5,500 newtons times one meter across. This is going to be 5,500 newton meters. If I go from here and go down 5,500 newton meters, I'm going to end up with a non-zero moment at the end. Well, you can't do that. This is a pinned end. The whole point is that there is no moment on the end. That's what pins do. Well, this is where that point moment comes in here. All right? Now, this is a negative moment compared to that load, or that uh, sign convention I've got. However, what, what's going on here now is I'm going to use a different sign convention in order to draw this, and this is called the designer's sign convention. Right? Designer's sign convention, here let me, I'm going to actually erase this now, because I don't need it anymore. Designer's sign convention says that anything that induces a positive, or a, a, a positive curvature is a positive moment. So, this is going to be one of the dumbest things I ever draw on the board, but here's how you can tell what positive curvature is. Positive curvature curves 
up on the ends, down in the middle. Well, that's positive. Negative curvature curves down on the ends. Okay? Now, this is silly, but you're going to remember it. Okay? Positive, negative. That's how you remember it. And the way we apply it here, it's kind of contrived, I think, but this is the way we, re we teach it to our students to remember it, have them remember it, is anything that, it, that makes a positive curvature to the right of the moment is positive. So if I look at a beam here that's pinned on the ends, and I've got a moment in there like that, that's going to induce negative curvature there and positive curvature there. So that actually counts as a positive moment. Again. It, when I become king of the world, I'm going to figure out some way to, rec to reconcile these two. Until I become, become king of the world, we're going to have to live with something like this. And this is called the designer sign convention. All right? Designer sign convention, because designers who are communicating with each other had to standardize somehow, or they will wind up getting the wrong answer. So that's positive over there, that's minus over there. We go left to right. So that point moment, that thousand newton meter point moment, moves me up to right there. And now I've got minus 5,500 times one meter. Brings me back down to zero. That's 5,500 right there. All right, so there's what the load shear moment diagram looks like with a point moment. Hope this helps. And I hope you get A's in all your classes. We'll see you next time.